Hello my friends, welcome back to a new video where we are going to increase our knowledge on the use of ESP32 microcontroller. I was working hard in the giveaway video of 100 plus subscribers when I received an interesting comment in one of our previous videos about online data uploading with ESP32 microcontroller. The comment states, Can we combine with controller through this web too? I hope you will do this video. The comment sounds a little cryptic, but I guess that our friend Liwet is referring to controlling the digital outputs of the microcontroller via web. So Liwet, or Liwit, I have an answer for you. Yes! If you remember, when sending the data online, we were also collecting the response data of the URL to check the correct insertion of the data. Using the same principle, we can modify the database online and after collect this information to control our ESP32. It is an easy project, but considering the attention that the online data posting video received and the need for help of Liwet, we have to dust off our superhero switch and try to control the ESP32 microcontroller over internet. Our plan is quite simple and clear and is based in our previous work. We will build a minimalistic web interface able to modify the status of GPO pins stored in an online database. The status data will be read by the ESP32 microcontroller by accessing to a URL that will post the data in a string format. Once the ESP32 gets the data, this will trigger the activation or disactivation of specific digital pins. Triggering LEDs or any other device connected to them, like for example some release that trigger other devices. For this example, we are going to control three pins, however it can be extended to all the available pins of the ESP32 board. Today, we are going to use another board, cheaper, cleaner and with USB-C, but the code and circuits are compatible with any other ESP32 board. Additionally, we are going to need three LEDs and three resistors to check if the digital pins are activated or disactivated. I'm going to use these 1.5 red LEDs and 68 ohms resistor that will allow to trigger the maximum brightness from the LEDs. Even if connections are pretty simple, you just need to check a blank sample on internet. Here is a small sketch. We need to connect the three LEDs that we are going to use in three digital pins of the board. In our case, G13, G12 and G14. We also need to add a resistor to limit the current on the LEDs. The LEDs that I'm going to use according to the dataset have a voltage drop of 1.5 volts and an operating current of 30 mA. Considering a voltage of 3.3 volts in the digital pins, we will need to add a resistor of 60 ohms to get the maximum operating current. So we can select something that is nearby. In my case, I have 68 ohms resistors. As you know, I hate protoboards, but for this example, I'm going to use one, as I want to recover all the components easily and there are no complex connections. So let's mount it. And voila, protoboard prepared. Let's move now to the most interesting part, the server-side coding and the Arduino ID coding. For the server side, we will only need to prepare three pieces of code to upload to our web, with self-explanatory names. We have the DB connection PHP file that manages the connections to the database, equal to the one that we used in our previous video about data uploading. Then we have the manage CSP32 PHP file that modifies the database where we store the GPIO values according to the user selections, and the get GPIO PHP file that returns the results of the GPIO values stored in the database. This is the one that the microcontroller board will access to activate or disactivate the digital pins. The DB connection PHP file just contains two functions. One for opening the database connections where we need to add the information of the database, host name, database name, password, user and port, and the other to close the connections. We will call these two PHP functions from the other files. Manage ESP32 PHP file displays a set of three forms consisting each one on a dynamic button. Each of the buttons controls the status of a digital pin. Whenever we push the button, the new value of the GPIO is submitted to the database by reloading the page with a get method. 
When we enter to the web page for the first time, we are not passing any values. Thus, the first div in the PHP code is ignored, and we just check for the current values of the GPIO pins in the database. In the HTML code, we just display a title and the three forms with a submit button. The values to be submitted will be the inverse of the current value, that is controlled by a conditional PHP function. So, if the current value of the GPIO 1 is 1, the new value to be submitted if we push the button will need to be 0, or if the current value is 0, the values to be submitted will be 1. In the other hand, we also want to display in the text of the button the current status. Therefore, we also modify this value according to the values in the database. If the value is 1, we display GPIO 1 on, and if the value is 0, we display GPIO 1 off. We do the same for the rest of the buttons. Now, if we push one of the buttons, it will send using a get method the new value. The page will be reloaded with a query of the preset GPIO and its value, and the if statement in the PHP code above will be used. This statement will detect which button has been pressed and it will submit the new value to the database and after, the web will be updated accordingly. It is quite incredible, don't you think? Ok, ok, and the last file, get GPIO PHP. This is an easy one. It's just a PHP code that asks for the GPIO values to the database and displays them in a vector separated by commas. Let's upload this script into our free web and add the GPIO data table to our database. We will skip how to generate our free web as this was covered in our previous video about online data posting with the ESP32 microcontroller. Check the video in the link to cover this part. Moreover, we are using the free hosting option of our space, but other platforms such as Bluehost can be also used. You can see that we still have the files of our previous videos there. They will remain there as I know that some people is using this web for testing. No problem. We drag and drop the files, I'm done. The GPIO table in our database will consist of three columns, one for each digital pin that we want to control, and one row with the values that will be updated. Once we define it, we can access to the Manage ESP32 PHP and start playing with the buttons. And we will see that the values in the database as well as in the get GPIO PHP file change accordingly. So let's prepare the code for the ESP32 microcontroller board. As always, the code starts with the library definition. The library is necessary to connect to the Wi-Fi and to get via HTTP the data from the web. After, we define the variables that we will need in the code. Check time to define the frequency of accessing to the get GPIO PHP file, the variables associated to the Wi-Fi communication, and digital pins that are going to be used. GPIO 1, pin 13, GPIO 2, pin 12, and GPIO 3, pin 14. You can select the ones that you want. In the setup, we will first connect to our Wi-Fi signal. For that, we will need to define a Wi-Fi network name and the password. After, we will initiate the serial for debugging and to follow the different steps of the code. Once the code is working, we can comment out the serial calls. Finally, we define the digital pins as outputs. In the loop, we begin defining the URL where we are going to collect the data from. We define a HTTP client and we check the Wi-Fi connection. If this is positive, then we access to the URL and we get the HTTP response. In absence of errors, we will be able to recover the information displayed by a URL and storage in a string variable, payload, and separate the information into superstring to active or disactivate the digital pins. As we are using zeros and ones to represent the activation of the pins, we can directly use this information to trigger the digital pins. After, we close the HTTP connection. In the end, we set a delay according to the check time defined. This will manage the URL accessing frequency that needs to be defined according to the application and how fast we want the system to respond. Let's upload the code to the circuit and check the performance.
As you see, everything works. This small project can be used, for example, to activate, release, and power a irrigation or heating system remotely. But you will need to add a login page for security. We will see soon the application of a similar approach to control solar power production autonomously using a Raspberry Pi for decision making. But next video will be the giveaway video that I promised for the 100 plus subscribers. Thank you for your support. As you know, all the code, libraries and connection drawings are available in the description. I hope you like it and don't forget to support the channel and our work by subscribing, liking and commenting. See you in the next one!